What is up guys? So I've been messing around with Betaflight. I've been testing out the new 3.2 uh, firmware. Um, I switched my racing quad over to it. Um, I'm now running Betaflight for my racing rig. I normally run KISS uh, on everything. And some of these features that Betaflight 3.2 has is just too good to pass up. So I had to give it a try. And the main feature I'm talking about today that I would actually call a game changer is the dynamic filter. So Betaflight has introduced this new dynamic filter in 3.2 and if you're interested in using this you can follow along. I'm going to show you guys how to do it. I will put a link to the GitHub for 3.2 in the description down below um, and it also requires a new GUI. So I will put a link to that and a short description on how to install it. Um, and at the end of the video, I'll uh, just explain how to install it as well. So it's pretty simple. So, um, but anyways, this new dynamic filter is amazing. Um, it gives you the safety of having a lot of filters to protect your equipment from getting damaged, uh, like ESCs and motors from overheating and burning up but it gives you the benefit of having perfectly tuned filters um, and all the reduced latency that comes with having perfectly tuned in the least amount of filters as possible. So traditionally you would have to black box your setup with relatively low PIDs so that the uh, PIDs aren't causing any kind of noise and you would go out and you would black box and you can use debug notch and you can go in and see where noise takes place uh, through the frequency range. And then you can go in and remove uh, by using notch filters and your low pass filters, you can remove that noise um, and by doing it with the least amount of filtering, so like removing one of the notches um, or possibly removing both notches or turning up your low pass filters really high like above a hundred uh, anything above a hundred is according to Betaflight uh, optimal uh, you can go and do all that and you can get a really good flying setup but it requires black box and the worst part is is after you go and do all of that let's say you do it on a brand new quad and you got it perfect and you go out and fly and you start hitting gates and you have a couple good crashes now the bearings are getting a little bit noisy um, or you're in the middle of a race and you snag a gate and you get a slightly bent prop or put a big nick in it that's gonna change where noise takes place in the frequency range and it may go outside of your uh, filter or it may go really close to the edge of where you have your filter set up and that noise is now going to get into your PID loop. It can start causing your motors to overheat. Um, it's not, and it's going to cause a lot of jello and vibration uh, in your camera throughout the rest of your race. It's just not good. The dynamic filters fixes all this. So basically, you can turn this thing on, turn off your notch filters, and it's now going to jump around to whatever frequency is too noisy and it's going to pull the noise down to remove it from the gyro loop. So it isn't 100% perfect. If you get a really messed up prop, it's still going to vibrate. There's no way around it. It's going to try to remove that noise, but it's not going to fix a extremely bent up prop. But if you have props that you've bent back, or you just barely bent it or have a little nick in it on like say PC props, this will get rid of the noise from that and allow you to continue flying out your flight without damaging any of your equipment. The bonus to it is because it's only taking care of the noisy areas and from what I have seen, at least in feel, it feels like it's only a single filter. If you remove notch filter one, notch filter two, and your D-term notch, which is how I'm running my setup currently, you are actually running the same amount of filters as a perfectly tuned setup for with PC props. Um, but on D-term, you're actually removing an extra filter that you would normally have um, on most setups. So am I saying that you can't get a better flying setup for like say freestyle that you are always going to run perfect props 
Uh, no, you can tune your freestyle rig and remove as much filtering as possible and probably get a slightly better feel doing that. But for a racing setup, the dynamic filters are amazing. Um, like I said, you can snag a gate, you can scrub the ground and mess up a prop a little bit, but still get all the benefits of having a perfectly tuned setup. So, um, I would like to let you guys know if you're gonna do this, use it with caution and take the right steps in using the dynamic filters. Uh, you're gonna wanna turn them on. You're then gonna want to remove at least your notch two um, or I th whichever one's most aggressive, whatever notch is the lowest frequency. Um, you're gonna wanna remove that one um, and go out and test. If your motors are coming back cool, remove the other notch and go out and test. If your motors are still coming back cool, remove D-term and disable that, uh, the D-term notch filter that is, and go out and try that. If you still have cool motors, try pushing up your low pass filters a little bit. Any filter you can remove is going to reduce latency and give you a better stick feel and the higher you can move your low pass filters until you get around like 180 after that, you're not gonna feel much difference, if any, by moving them any higher. Um, but currently on my setup, um, I'm running a Bolt Kraken Works with X Nova 2206 Lightning uh, 2600 KV motors um, on Ray 32 uh, 35 amp ESCs, and I'm running the Betaflight BFF three board um, on currently I'm running 4k 2k um, and I'll, that's a, the whole reason I'm running slightly low um, loop times is another video for another day um, I'll go into that when I do a little bit of black box tuning and talk about black box tuning why I run a lower uh, frequency I will say that a higher frequency can be better especially with filters and like I said that's a video for another day I want to try to keep this sh as short as possible um, but that's the setup I'm currently running and for filters I have no notch filters at all not no notch one no notch two no d-term notch they're all off my low pass for gyro low pass is a hundred and sixty and my D term low pass is 140. So, you know, according to Betaflight, anything above 100 for your low pass is really good, and I have no notch filters. So, I'm literally just running the low pass filters and the dynamic filter. And I've been doing this for about two weeks now, and I can tell you that it works amazing. Um, I've had some props come back after numerous gate strikes with little literally have gouges in them that I would normally never fly they would come off my quad immediately and I had to actually go back out and fly it again to see if I just didn't notice it and sure enough it flew pretty much normal like yeah I could tell there was a little bit of a vibration here and there because the props were bad um, and like I said, I would never fly props like that. If they came back like that, they were coming off the quad. But I was amazed at the fact that I finished out the entire race without it really phasing me. It wasn't like I needed to land because I was worried about burning up a motor or an ESC and the motors came back cool. So I was quite surprised with that. That would never have happened if I was running just a single notch filter or no notch filter at all with a really well-tuned uh, low pass so I was blown away I was I was extremely amazed with it um, so now what I'm gonna do um, now that this video is probably way too long um, I'm going to show you guys in beta flight how to set it up it's very simple it takes practically no time at all um, and uh, I'll also talk about the filters and how to disable those in case you don't know how to do that as well so we're gonna hop on over to beta flight and I'm gonna show you guys how to do this all right guys so right now i have pulled up black box explorer i just wanted to show you guys that like i said and i i 
correct myself here. I'll correct myself. Uh, my gyro low pass is at 150 and my D term is at 120. Um, but I was running 160 and 140. I turned it down, uh, I believe, yesterday um, because I thought maybe they were too high, um, which maybe they are. But let me zoom all the way in. So I am now zoomed all the way in. And as you can see, the noise is still relatively quiet. Um, I would not be that worried about this noise. And the thing about this is these were trashed props. I was running completely trash props. Um, this is the roll. And here is the noise for pitch and the noise for yaw. And like I said, these props were trashed. They had, there wasn't a single prop that was good. They all were slightly bent. Uh, they're tri they're the uh, HQ uh, V3 tries. Um, and they were trashed. And this is all I was getting for noise. So it, it's pretty amazing. I, I am going to actually experiment with just bumping these filters all the way up and basically turning them off. So, but I wanted to show you guys real quick, you know, what they, uh, what the filters or what the noise looks like while using dynamic filters. And, um, as far as I know, this is true gyro noise. Um, there's some new stuff in 3.2, uh, for debug. Um, but I haven't figured out how to get it to work yet. There's one called D filter. Um, so if any of you guys know how to, uh, use those, please, uh, put down in the comments uh, how how you guys are using it or how you like what it's for but as of right now I don't know what that's for so but anyways I just wanted to show you guys what the noise looks like so now we're gonna hop on over and uh, do the um, how to on how to set up the dynamic filter all right so I got my quad plugged in now so here we go all right so now that we are in this is my personal race quad so everything's already done um, but I'll show you the commands to get it taken care of so um, we'll just type in dump and if you ever want to see if there's any features you can go ahead and just scroll on up to the feature area and you can read through all the features and anything that has no dash in front of it is already enabled and anything that has a dash in front of it means that it's disabled um, but it's something you can turn on so and like for some reason anti-gravity and dynamic filter show that they're I don't know so but you can see down here that they're enabled so this is what you need to type in go ahead and copy that and paste that there that's all you gotta do Put it in there, hit enter, it'll say feature, dynamic filter, enabled dynamic filter. Once that's on, you just type in save, hit enter, it'll reboot, and now it's enabled. Once you have that enabled, you then need to go to PID tuning, go to your filter settings, and Honestly, I would start off by turning notch filter one and notch filter two, these here, set these to zero and it'll disable both. The reason I recommend disabling both right off the bat is there can be, from what I've been told, there can be issues where the dynamic filter causes some kind of phasing problem and can actually cause its own oscillation. So you're best bet is to turn both of these off um, and also uh, which I forgot to mention earlier is I am also running uh, D term low pass frequency um, it's B it's set to PT1 not bi quad um, I don't have a video on that but I'm sure if you do a YouTube search for D term PT1 somebody's got a video on it so um, but it basically makes it to where the D term low pass is less aggressive. So, and I've also have that turned on as well right now. So, um, as you can see, my D term notch is off and both notch filters are off. Um, I would start with these two here. And, uh, so this one here and this one here, you just set it to zero. It turns it off. And if your motors are coming back cool, then go ahead and turn this one off as well. 
Um, you do not need black box to do this, but it does help if uh, you are getting heat in your motors. You can black box it and make sure it's not noise from the gyro. It could be noise from D-term, so you could check those things. Um, but the nice thing about this is for the most part, I've tried many different quads now and I've been able to turn off all three of these on every quad I've uh, put this on as well as turn filters up uh, the low pass up a little bit on pretty much well, on every quad that I have done this to I've been able to do that so um, just want to fill you guys in with as much info as possible so you guys can get this done but other than that um, the only other cool thing that I'll just add as a bonus to the end of the video another cool feature is if you type in get crash you see all this stuff here this is the new crash recovery um basically you can just go to this crash recovery here and you turn it on um and for the most part what this will do um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. If you guys want to know more about this, leave a comment down below tell, uh, saying you want to know more about how this works. But the way the feature works is it looks at how many degrees a second your gyro is off from command. And if it goes outside of a certain threshold, which you set in these settings, it'll automatically enable level mode or uh, angle mode. And it will go into self level until it gets itself under control and then it will disable it back into acro mode um, pretty cool feature buddy of mine is currently running this and it seems to work pretty good I have yet to try it yet um, I usually just try to recover my own crashes but I have been interested in turning this on so there's not much I can say about this yet um, but I wanted to just add this as a little bonus to the end of the video for you guys so Hopefully this uh, helped you guys out and I hope you enjoy the new uh, dynamic filters. Like I said, um, I will post a comment or a, uh, in the comments below, I will post links to where to get uh, Betaflight 3.2 and also where to get the uh, new GUI. All right, so here is how you're going to get the Betaflight configurator that works with 3.2. You're going to click this right here, clone or download. You're going to hit download zip, which I've already done. It'll download the zip file for it. You're going to unzip that file into its own. So extract the zip into its own folder. And then you're going to select that folder that contains all of the unzipped files and folders. And that is what you're going to load in here. So you're going to click the load unpacked extension. You're going to find that folder that you unpacked it in and you are going to highlight it and click OK. Once that's done, you'll get it in here. Oh, and by the way, you have to have developer mode enabled. Um, so once you've done that, you you'll have a um, you have Betaflight configurator one three point one point two and you can launch it here or if you hit details, you can hit create shortcut. Hold on. You can hit details and then you can hit create shortcut and that will add it to your desktop so hopefully that helped you guys out and um you guys can play around with this if you want um but the dynamic filters are a complete game changer they are awesome i highly suggest you try them out and um have fun with some of the other fun features that 3.2 has once you get it on your quad like for instance this crash recovery so I go hope you guys like the video and have fun flying.